mountain goat is a sure-footed climber that fearlessly challenges any incline, grade, or rock face many times just because it can. And just like the goat, the iconic Jeep Wrangler goes where other vehicles don't dare. High up in the mountains, sometimes the only thing you'll see besides the occasional goat are Jeeps. Jeeps are bought and built for a variety of things, not the least of which is to be rock climbing machines that go where others can't. Jeeps have a great history, passionate following, and extensive aftermarket support to help you make your Jeep your own. We are getting ready to take a look at the build of my Jeep JL called the Mountain Goat. Before we do that, let's get some background. I have owned three Jeep Wranglers prior to this one, and all were Jeep JKs. This is my first one, a 2011 Rubicon that had a personality of its own and liked to get stuck. My next Jeep JK was a sport. Here's a clip of me at the Southern Missouri Off-Road Ranch. I really enjoyed building and wheeling this Jeep, but it didn't take me long to get back into another Rubicon. This 2016 was a lot of fun. As I built each new Jeep, I learned what worked for me and what didn't, but I saw a trend. Each build had a little taller lift and larger tires, as 33-inch all-terrains gave way to 35-inch mud tires. I took this Jeep exploring and became more entrenched in the off-road and overlanding lifestyle. I even built an off-road camping trailer with rooftop tent. This is the last trip that I took with the Jeep and trailer. I had so much fun with my old Jeeps, and they were great vehicles, which were very capable in their own right. But out with the old and in with the new, as they say. It was time to close the chapter on the JKs for now and start a new one with the next generation of Jeep Wrangler, the JL. I picked up a brand new bright white 2018 Jeep Wrangler JL Unlimited Rubicon. Even with 33 inch tire stock, this seemed like a baby compared to my last Jeep, but that wouldn't last long. A lift was the first thing on my list, and I went to a trusted name that I have worked with on my past builds, Northridge 4x4. They're professional, know their products, and have a genuine enthusiasm for Jeeps. With the JL being so new, many of the more recognized names don't have products released yet or have backorder issues due to demand. I found this ReadyLift kit, and after doing some research on the company, found that they support almost every brand of truck and SUV on the market and support military and first responders. Northridge's seal of approval sold me too, so I picked up the 2.5 inch SST lift kit. Installation was straightforward and instructions were clear. I have tackled similar lifts before and this one installs similarly and comes complete with shock extensions and bump stops. If you take your time and can turn a wrench, this is an easy job and a good way to save money on installation to go towards other modifications to your Jeep. Next on the build list for the Mountain Goat was tires. And I had 35s before, so 37 inch tires were the size I was after. Go big or go home, right? With something as critical and expensive as tires, I believe research is important to make the right choice. This Jeep is my daily driver and weekend trail machine, so I needed off-road performance and on-road manners. Firestone Destination MT2s kept showing up in my research as highly rated, and while Firestone isn't the first go-to in Jeep circles or a brand I historically thought of for off-road performance, I had to consider the data. I found a deal I couldn't refuse along with local availability and service, so they were the best choice. The reviews have been right so far about on and off-road performance, and they give the Jeep a nice stance and look. 
Running stock rims allows you to keep the factory look and even save some dough, but wheel offset with wider tires can cause rubbing. Wheel spacers correct this issue, and I made sure to get mine from a reputable source, in this case Synergy Manufacturing through Northridge 4x4. The factory spare tire carrier on the Jeep JL Rubicon can accommodate up to a 35 inch spare tire with no modification. Since I moved to 37s, I want to make sure and protect the mount and tailgate hinge from excessive wear, so I picked up the Mopar tailgate reinforcement kit and Rough Country spare tire relocation plate for the JL from Northridge. This combination works well together and even allowed me to retain the stock third brake light by extending the factory bracket. Speaking of brackets, I modified an existing bracket I had to make an easy CB antenna mount. A little primer, paint, and elbow grease were all it took for a nearly no-cost upgrade to get me ready for the next group trail ride. I installed the CB radio cable by removing the rear inside plate on the tailgate and running it between the carpet and where the body meets the hardtop. Once I reached the back door, I went under the carpet the rest of the way. Having completed quite a few modifications, I was ready to take a break and decided to make a trek to Colorado to put the new and improved Jeep to the test. It was impressive, and even with big tires, was the best highway trip I have ever taken in a Wrangler. I did miss my old trailer and rooftop tent set up that trip, but had some plans for when I returned home. I also have been thinking about a solution to haul kayaks more often than when I am running no top as I had done with my JK. I mentioned that I had a plan for when I returned home, and that plan was to install a roof rack. I enjoyed the looks of the Rhino Rack Pioneer platform like on this Jeep, and have heard nothing but good things about the performance. With my trailer gone, I plan to eventually run a hard shell rooftop tent on the Jeep, so I needed something strong. You probably guessed it, but it was back to Northridge for the solution. Maximus 3 makes a short and long roof rack kit for the JL, and I chose the long rack with no extra rails or ladder as shown here. The rack is the Rhino Pioneer platform and the brackets are made by Maximus 3. The brackets transfer the weight on the rack to the roll cage of the Jeep and give you a dynamic load rating of 300 pounds and a static load rating of 900 pounds, which is more than enough for even the largest of rooftop tents or heavy gear. There is a nice low profile and the rack offers great versatility. But hey, what's missing from the front of that Jeep? Northridge 4x4 helped me out with a worn VR series winch, which sat in the box on my living room floor for a while as I mulled over new front bumpers. I finally went to another trusted name in the Jeep aftermarket, Extreme Terrain. I wanted a stubby bumper with a built-in winch plate and also one that would accommodate reusing my factory fog lights, and I finally found the perfect one. My choice was the Red Rock 4x4 Crawler front stubby bumper. Overall, the bumper and winch installation were pretty easy. The hardest part, if there was one, was the stock bumper removal and getting it apart to get to the wiring harness so I could retain my factory fog lights. Just like the JK, the JL front bumper is held in place with eight bolts. Once I completed installation, I stretched my winch line and mounted my high lift jack to even further prepare for what the trails will offer. The Mountain Goat build is far from finished. On the short list, I have external lighting, the rooftop tent, a rear storage platform, and possibly a rear bumper. For now though, I'm ready to take another break and test the limits of what this new JL and I can do.